Well, as the winter season approaches, cases of COVID, flu, and RSV are all expected to rise. RSV is a respiratory virus that's especially tough on our children, and it's already putting a strain on some health care facilities. Close to one in every 500 babies six months and younger was hospitalized with RSV since the beginning of October. That's according to preliminary estimates from the CDC. Joining me now is Dr. Yvonne Maldonado of Stanford Healthcare. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are leading the Stanford uh, effort on the RSV vaccine for women and babies. How close are we to getting a vaccine for kids and, 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 and women for RSV? Yeah, that was, yeah it was uh, where it, it feels like we're very close at this point, uh, given that we've been working on a vaccine for RSV for decades now. So we're, we have the best data we ever have. This was a study that involved 7,400 pregnant women all around the world. Um, and the idea was to vaccinate the pregnant women and see if the antibodies that the mothers had would pass into the babies and protect them. And indeed the data appear to show that the babies are protected for at least the first six months of life from serious RSV disease. So very promising and also promising data on vaccines for people over 60 as well. Yeah, that is great news. All right, we're seeing so many more RSV cases, it seems like this year. How's the situation right now at your hospital? And why do you think there's so many more cases this year? Is it because the masks are off? Well, we're like everyone else in the country. We're just, we're seeing lots of cases of, of RSV in the hospital. And one of the issues around that is that we have to make sure the kids are isolated so that they don't pass that infection on to other children in the hospital. But we're also seeing other respiratory viruses as well, not just RSV, there's flu, and there are other winter viruses as well. So um, this is a problem here. As, uh, and the issue that we're concerned about, of course, is that we're just at the beginning of the season. So it may get worse and we, uh, don't want to run out of beds. Um, we don't know why this is happening, but um, remember, um, children under two virtually all get RSV by the time uh, they hit two years of age. So we do think that maybe um, with lack of exposure over the last two years, mm -hmm. everyone is just getting infected all at the same time. But it's important to remember that RSV doesn't provide long lasting immunity. Mm -hmm. So um, people are always uh, susceptible throughout their lifetimes to keep getting RSV. So tell us a little bit about what makes RSV different than, say, the common colds. It seems like so many of the kids now have runny noses, they have coughs, they have sneezes. But what makes RSV different than that? Well, RSV is a really interesting virus in that it causes direct um, inflammation of the airways, the, the tubes in your lungs that uh, help you bring in air into your lungs. Um, and those airways can get inflamed. Now for adults, that's generally not a big deal, but for little babies, their airways are already so narrow. It's like plugging up a straw. And the problem is it's not just mucus. The actual walls of the airways get very thick. And so it makes it very hard for them to breathe and they can actually have trouble really getting air in and out of their lungs. So that's, and that takes, a, it takes a while for that swelling to go away. Um, and so that's why um, these babies really need to be monitored because they can have real troubles breathing um, that can last for you know up to weeks in some cases. What are the symptoms to look out for where you think that maybe the child should be taken to the emergency room? Well, RSV is a, very much like the other cold viruses and the, the initial symptoms can be low grade fevers, uh, coughing, wheezing, but if the baby is breathing really fast, uh, mm -hmm. fast enough, for example, that they can't nurse or they can't eat or drink, that is a, a sign that the baby is going to get tired and won't be able to keep up that respiratory rate. If they're turning um, a little pale or um, or even if their lips turn blue, which again is an obvious sign, uh, you don't want to wait that long. Um, but really, if they're acting pretty lethargic and their fever uh, goes up, if they're just not eating and drinking well, certainly most providers have phone numbers that people can call to make sure they can check in um, and see if they can bring their children in to be seen. You mentioned that adults tend to do better with RSV, but they can still get pretty sick. Can you tell us a little bit about why adults can be at risk for getting pretty sick with RSV and what they should do? Yeah, so the the young, very young children under six months are at high risk because of the small airways, but older individuals, we don't understand why, but they can actually get severe pneumonia 
from RSV. And in fact, the number of hospitalizations for people over 65 is higher than it is, than it is for children under two. Um, and we had not recognized it before because people didn't get tested. Um, I think um, that the issues there are really that uh, even uh, y younger adults can get sick. They can get pneumonia as well. Sometimes they can get a secondary uh, bacterial infection also. Um, but the biggest burden tends to be in the people 60 and older. And mm -hmm. that's why we really try to make sure that people don't uh, uh, really socialize or go to work if they're sick, whether or they have COVID or not, there are other viruses that can make your colleagues pretty sick. Yeah, and, and just really quickly, the treatment, you can't really take antibiotics for this because it's a virus, correct? So is it mostly over-the-counter medications? Yeah, really, it's just um, uh, drinking fluids mm -hmm. and staying home if you're ill, just resting, uh, making sure you're hydrated if you need something for the fever, but there's no treatment. If people yeah. come into the hospital, the main thing that we do for them is give them oxygen because they're really having trouble breathing. Right. And we are hoping, as I mentioned, in the next uh, calendar year, perhaps there might be a vaccine available for the highest risk people, but we, we don't have that right now. Yeah, hope for the future. All right, some great information. Dr. Yvonne Maldonado of Stanford Healthcare, thank you so much. Thank you.